If you've ever tried to scrape Google Maps to find leads for your business and thought to yourself, man, there's got to be a better way to do this. Well, you're right. There is. And I've spent the last three months developing the ultimate way to do it to get the best leads fast and easily. So in this video, I'm going to show you the exact process, copy me, that I use at my agency to generate hundreds of opportunities every single week. That way you can just take this for yourself and scrape as many leads as you want within just an hour or two. So here on my screen, you can see a list of almost 20,000 leads that we found with verified emails within the doctors and anti-aging niche. We then ran a cold email campaign that generated 170 opportunities within just four weeks. We also ran another one to ophthalmology clinics and found 2,000 within a certain specific region and generated 66 opportunities in four weeks. We ran all these cold email campaigns through instantly. Now, if you don't believe me, you can go ahead and go to our trust pilot and you can see about seven and eight figure entrepreneurs who are boasting about how we're bringing them leads that close every single day. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can do this for for your business. Let me go ahead and break down the status quo of Google Maps scraping, why it sucks, and our approach to 100 extra results while solving these issues so that you can actually build a comprehensive list. If you're not interested in that breakdown and you just want to skip right to the demo and see how it works, just go ahead and go to the timestamp right here and you can just go ahead and skip right to the demo. Now that we've got out all the people who don't want to learn, guys who want to understand the technical of how it works, let me go ahead and show you guys how existing scrapers work. So if you watch most videos, they'll say use a Chrome extension. That's not even true, right? You can't not use a Chrome extension to scrape Google Maps. Google does not want you to scrape Google Maps, and so they are not going to permit a Chrome extension on their marketplace that allows you to scrape Google Maps. What you'll find is that Chrome extensions actually scrape Microsoft Bing. You know, Google doesn't care if you do anything to Microsoft. Here I've downloaded one. This is called the Map Scraper. What I can do is I can just go ahead and open it. It'll take me to a new tab here, and then I can type in the search that I want. So let's say I type in Doctor's Office Miami. I can go ahead and click Start Extraction, and it's going to start building up the list of businesses. What we'll see here is that we can go ahead and download these and we get a few leads, which is not bad. So let me go ahead and open this up. You know, we got our 18 leads. We got the name of the company. We got the address. We got the Bing's map URL. We got the emails. One thing that you'll see, which is kind of important that's missing is some of the specific websites, but for the ones that it has, it has. So that's good. Let's talk about the limitations of this. Let's first switch over to Google Maps and I'll show you the first limitation. So if we look up Doctor's Office Miami, what we'll find is there's actually way more than 18. And so why are we only seeing 18? Well, it's because Google Maps actually has algorithms in place to prevent you from what they call paginating through requests because they don't want you to scrape it. They're looking for a certain human activity that's actually scrolling through this to make sure that you're not a robot or some sort of API that's scraping through this. Although there are ways to bypass that and we're going to break that down a little bit here. First thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and switch over to pen and paper. Let's go ahead and break down the first issues with this process. So number one, you're finding 18 doctors when there's probably well over 500. So you're not even getting all the ones within Miami. That's the first issue. The second issue is that you can't scrape all of USA in one shot. So you're gonna have to actually scrape all of these separately. What does that mean? Well, there's over 19,000 cities in the entire United States. You're gonna be sitting here with that Chrome extension for a long time going through all of those. The second thing that you'll find is, let's use eye doctors for an example here, is that if you search vision exam, you might find 237 locations, vision exam. If you search dry eyes doctor, you might find 124. And what you'll find is that you'll have a lot of these businesses and each one of these lines, I'm going to say represents a business that you find on both queries. But you'll also find some that are on vision exam that are not on dry eyes. So these are going to be ones that are vision exam only and vice versa, right? You're going to find some on dry eye doctors that are not on vision exam. But at the end of the day, these are good fit. These are eye doctors. And why is this? Well, it comes down to how the Google Maps algorithm works. The keywords that an eye doctor is including, the pictures, the posts, the comments, the reviews, all determine what keywords they pop up for. But we don't really give a shit about the Google algorithm. What we care about is getting the leads that we want. And so if you want to get all the leads within a region or in the United States, you can't just scrape every city. You also need to scrape multiple queries within each city. And so for example, you might might want to search dry eyes, you might want to search vision exam, you might want to search eye doctor, you might want to search ophthalmologist, which I'll probably spell wrong, you might want to search cataract surgery, and this is an exact use case that one of our clients had. What you'll find is you'll find unique companies under each one of these, and what we found is that five queries will typically get you 90% of all of the companies that you want to find. Now, the next thing that we need to talk about is pagination. It's only allowing you to get 18, which is what we might call a page or a 
partial page. If you want to get all 500, you're going to need to get a way to go through all the pages on that specific search. So there's page one, page two, page three, page four, and so on. The best way to do this is with automation. So you want to scrape every single query in every single city for every single page. Now, what you can imagine is if there's 19,000 cities, if there's five queries for each, and there's 20 pages of results, what you're looking at is 19 times five, that's 95,000 times 20 is going to be 1.9 million. That's 1.9 million searches you'll have to do. Have fun doing that on a Chrome extension. What is listed as a automated map scraper is not really automated. When you're looking at an average of 1% of cold outreaches turning into a meeting, this 18 number is not going to cut into a meeting. That's a fifth of a meeting. You would have to do five queries to get about 100 results just to get one conversion, right? This is not scalable. This is not a good strategy. And let's go through how would we do this? We would first want to break it down. So 19,000 cities, that's a lot. You don't really need to go through all the cities. You can go through all the counties. There's about 3,144 counties. So a county might be Harris, Texas. It might be Travis, Texas. That's the Austin area. I'm a Texan, so that's I'm just share these. It might be Dallas, Texas, which has same city and county name. Harris is in Houston. Then you want to search those five queries, right? So one, two, three, four, five. So what are those one, two, three, four, five? Well, let me just break this down. So it might be eye doctor, Harris, Texas. It might be vision exam, Harris, Texas. It might be contacts. And we'll just say Harris, Texas. It might be ophthalmologist. It might be cataracts, so on and so on and so on. Now you have to do that across all 3,000 counties. So five queries times 3,144 counties. You need to do about 15,000 if you simplify this, 15,000 queries and paginate through them all to get all 50,000 to 100,000 doctors. That's the process that you would take if you were somebody developing a solution on how to do this. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today. And so you're not gonna have to build this out from scratch. I spent months building this out because I had to. I had clients, I needed to keep generating them leads every single month so that they were happy. And using these generic solutions, I was starting to run out of leads. I needed a better solution. So I figured out how to make this from scratch. And I used two automation tools. I don't know how to code, so I had to rely on no code tools. The ones that I used, are clay.com and n8n. I use n8n for the pagination and I use clay.com for everything else. We're also gonna post to serper.dev to bypass the algorithm. So this is just an API that you can use to bypass the anti-scraping algorithm. And so I'm gonna break through how to do all this today. I'm gonna share all of the templates in my school community, which is completely free. You can join, you can download the n8n automations, you can download the clay.com template, a couple clicks, one hour, you can scrape the total addressable market. I'm giving this away, guys. The secrets are there's no secrets it's just a lot of hard work so let's go ahead and jump back to the screen and i'll show you guys what this looks like in clay so for my people who are not big learners they don't want to understand the process we're getting into the demo now basically what we're going to do is we're going to take every single county in the entire country very similar to the way that we're running this google maps extension scraper and what we're going to do is we're going to take los angeles california cook illinois about 3144 counties and we're going to create a query for each one of those so for example roofing roofing repair roof damage roof replacement. And then we're going to break those down county by county. So roofer Davidson, Tennessee, roofing Davidson, Tennessee, roof repair Davidson, Tennessee. And then what we're going to do is, you know, just in the same way, you might just plug this into your maps extension. We're going to actually just post this directly to an API that pretty much does the same thing. So rather than having to do it manually, we can do it all programmatically. And so in our automation tool, we're just going to call out to an HTTP API, which is going to go ahead and do all that work for us. First things first, guys, you're going to go ahead and need to download the N8N workflow that I have down in my school community below. What it's going to look like is just a JSON file. And what we're going to do is we're going to come into N8N and we're going to create a workflow. And then we're going to come up to the three dots. We're just going to import from file. And you're going to take that file directly out of my clay community. You're going to go ahead and click open. And what you're going to find here is a webhook. You're just going to go to production URL. You're going to grab that webhook. And then you're going to go ahead and come back to clay. And in that clay template that I also shared, you're going to come here to HTTP API. You're going to post this in here. And then you're not going to change anything. You're going to go ahead and just click save and don't run. And then what you'll find is if you click play, let me go ahead and make sure that it is active. Let me go ahead and make sure I've got that API in. Boom. It's queued. It's running. This one, which we already ran, is already done. But I'll go ahead and run a few more just so you guys can see how this works. Basically, what this is doing is it's taking our Serper API. So you'll go to serper.dev. You're going to grab your API key. You're going to go ahead and grab your content type here. You're going to come to clay. You're going to go to settings, connections, add connections, HTTP, headers. You're going to call this serper.dev. You're going to add your 
your new key and pair. So the first one is going to be X API key, and you're, then you're gonna put this in for the value. The next one is gonna be content type, and you're gonna go ahead and put in this value here. So then we've got our API key. I'm just gonna go ahead and blur this out, guys, so you can't see my API key. This is for security, but you would just go ahead and put yours in there. You go ahead and click save. I've already got mine in there. And then when you go ahead and you run, go ahead and select that header account, that server.dev one that you put. Go ahead and download the N8N like I just showed you. Drop your endpoint in here. You don't need to change anything. And then you can just click run. And what you'll find is that it's going to send this query, the query that we've inputted here. If you don't change anything, it'll pull in those queries that we just made. It's going to send those to N8N. It's going to add the API key to a variable, and then it's going to run through the pagination. Grab page one grab page two of the results, grab page three of the Google Maps result. It's going to add them all into one centralized list and it's going to return them. And so you'll see here, JLB Roofing Utah address, Brady Roofing address, and it's going to go through all the businesses. Here we found 258 for Roofer Utah. We found 264 for Roofing, 251 for Roof Repair. And so you're going to get about two to three X the businesses that you would get if you were to just search one. So what you'll see is these all look about the same, but a lot of them are actually unique. So between all five of these, they all have, you know, within 20 to 30, but they're actually mostly different companies. Then it's going to output this sheet. It's going to output all of them to this company table. Then the next thing we need to do is we need to find the people at the company. The way that we're going to do that is with an AI agent. If you don't know anything about AI agents, basically what they do is they just take your data and they plug into the web. All you have to do is just come in and change these titles out for the ones that you want in this format, CEO, owner, president, whatever they are, just type those in here within the same format. And then you can go ahead and come in here to your open AI API, scroll down to the JSON and just do the same thing here for these ones. Add in those exact same titles that you have here. The easiest way to do that, you just take these. You can come here to ChatGPT and say, hey, give me this list in a JSON array. It's gonna go ahead and give you all those. You just copy those in and then you can just replace these here. All right, so just scroll to the last quote, scroll up to the first quote, paste them in. You go ahead and click save and run and that's it. The AI is gonna run, it's gonna search the web, it's gonna start finding all these people. And so how does that work? It's basically gonna do a bunch of Google searches. Like for example, crown cap roofing, it's gonna search crown crop roofing, LinkedIn, right? It's gonna see, does the guy come up? If we look him up, Oscar, let's see if this is the guy. You know, no job title listed. I don't think that's the guy. So it's gonna search the next place. It's gonna search president, right? Same thing, same guy. That's not the guy, right? Maybe it'll search owner, Vincent and Vasquez. All right, this is the guy, chief executive officer. So it's going to add him. And then it's going to move on to the next title, roofing contractor, roofing estimator. And then if it doesn't find him and it goes through on LinkedIn and it's still got missing ones, then it's going to search stuff like, you know, CEO Zoom Info. We can see the owner. We can see the payroll account manager. We can get their names. We can't get their email, but we don't need their email. We just need their names. And so it's going to find all those people. It's going to return them in, a, in an array. And then it's going to write into the next table. All you have to do, guys, just click run. And then you're going to have the final people here. And then you're just going to run a find email enrichment. So what is find email. Well, find email is an API that allows you to just post, say, hey, I got this guy's name. I got his domain. You know, do you have this guy? Yes or no. If it has them, great. If not, then it's not going to return them. And then it'll get the company email. So we basically say, hey, if we can't find the decision maker, we just went through hell to find this lead. We still want to get some way to reach out to him. So we got an AI agent and we just has a simple prompt, guys. For the company website, try to identify a contact email found on the website. And so it's going to go to the website. It's going to try to see if they have a generic contact email address. Usually for these local businesses, it's decision makers who are monitoring this, right? We're not reaching out to Google. We're reaching out to local businesses. And so that's going to be a backup. And then just like that, you've got a list of all the final emails. And if you guys want to copy this, I mean, all you have to do is just add in the counties that you want, then just change out these right here for the ones that you want. And that's it. Now, if you're on a Clay account and you want to use credits, you can just run these enrichments just by using Clay Manage account. You can use credits. Or if you want to save some money, you can add in your open API keys. You can add in your find email API keys to run these enrichments. The way you do that, just go to settings, just go to connections, just add a connection. You can type in find email. You go to open AI, you can add your API key. Guys, this might take you an hour, two hours longer, three hours long might take you a day longer than it would take you if you were to do an extension, but you're getting a million times the results and that's how you're able to book hundreds of meetings. All right, guys. So now that you have the list of leads, the next question becomes, how do you reach out to them at scale? Well, the easiest, cheapest, and by far most effective way to do this is by using cold email. But there are certain things that you have to do right if you want to succeed. You need to make sure you land in the inbox. You have personalized messaging at scale that's going to drive conversions and that you're actually following all your best practices. So go ahead and click here to watch the next video to find out what I learned after generating over $8 million through cold email on behalf of my clients. So you can apply my learnings to your own outbound sales strategy and do cold email as effectively as possible to grow and scale your business while avoiding the mistakes that I made 
along the way. I'll see you guys in the next one.